special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review. I'm here with Professor Marcus Moll from the University of Heidelberg. We're in Dublin, Ireland at the European Cystic Fibrosis Congress. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Moll. Welcome. You were speaking today about uh, sodium channels in the airway. Why are they important in cystic fibrosis? So what we know about the pathogenesis of cystic fibrosis airways disease, we know that dehydration mm -hmm. of the airway surfaces are very important um, mechanism um, in disease initiation and also um, perpetuation of the disease. Now, normal hydration of airway surfaces requires coordinate secretion mm -hmm. um, of ions and fluid and that's predominantly driven by the CFTR chloride channel, mm -hmm. but then also absorption um, that's mediated by an epithelial sodium channel called ENAC. Now, in cystic fibrosis, the primary problem is that CFTR-mediated secretion is mm -hmm. defective, impaired, so there's less volume, less liquid on the surface, but then the function of the sodium channel remains normal or can even be, um, um, can even be increased, mm -hmm. especially during the, um, during the process of the disease when um, proteases are released from neutrophils, other inflammatory cells that have been shown to activate the channel um, further. And then in this situation, you really have a disbalance between secretion and absorption in the airways. Um, so the sodium channel um, um, will be a therapeutic target um, that can actually um, counteract um, the basic defect in the CF airway. So are there uh, th uh, therapeutics being developed to try to block sodium transport through ENAC? Yeah. There's an old molecule mm -hmm. called a milleride mm -hmm. that was initially developed as a diuretic. Um, because this sodium channel is also expressed in the kidney. Mm -hmm. um, and that sodium channel blocker has actually been tested in clinical trials, um, I think as early as 20 years ago. Um, and there were some positive results in the way that it improved mucosillary clearance mm -hmm. to some extent. Um, also positive in the terms of safety data. So inhalation of amylaride was safe. And then in larger cohorts, um, there were no therapeutic um, effects, benefits on lung function. And that lack of therapeutic effects um, was linked to relatively um, short duration of action. Mm -hmm. So amylaride has a pretty short half-life on airway surfaces, about 20 minutes before it's absorbed, um, and also relatively low um, potency. So, and that actually led to the development of, um, of new um, agents um, that are long-acting um, and, and, and more potent um, sodium channel blockers. And have you been able to study some of those agents? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they are not in clinical trials mm -hmm. yet. Um, in, in, so they are not in patients yet. Um, but we had the opportunity um, to study um, new agents and also compare them with the effects of amylaride in a mouse model of cystic fibrosis lung disease. Um, and there we also had the opportunity to compare preventive effects mm -hmm. by treating um, mice from birth okay. with um, um, treatment effects in chronic lung disease. And the remarkable finding, and actually surprising finding there, was even that the, the classical um, compound, low-potent mm -hmm. compound amylaride, um, had um, um, pretty strong um, both mucolytic and um, anti-inflammatory effects mm -hmm. um, in the preventive scenario. And this suggests that this molecule, where we already know it's safe, um, could also be useful um, for in a, um, the treatment of newborns that can now be diagnosed by newborn screening, mm -hmm. um, but obviously that um, concept still um, needs confirmation in clinical trials. So looking to the future, what do you see as the role for sodium channel inhibitors? Yeah. 
So, you know, we also had an opportunity to test some of the new agents on the mouse mm -hmm. model. Um, and I think there the important news is that they also have therapeutic effects in chronic established lung mm -hmm. disease on the mice. So I think that's really encouraging um, to further develop these and bring these into clinical testing um, for CF patients with chronic established lung disease. Um, I think sodium channel blockers could have a similar role to CFTR modulators. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't act on c specifically mm -hmm. on CFTR, but um, because they, by inhibiting the sodium channel, they improve hydration of airway surfaces, they do target an early and basic defect um, in the CF lung. Um, and, you know, a potential advantage could be that when we look at the modulators we have right now, um, so far, we can only um, treat a subset mm -hmm. of patients with specific mutations, um, and the uh, speculation, the hypothesis would be um, that all CF patients um, would benefit mm -hmm. from sodium channel blockers. Were you able to test the uh, effectiveness of uh, long-acting sodium channel blockers? What we know from the, um, from the CFTR potentiator trial so far is that it's probably difficult to obtain complete mm -hmm. restoration of function. Um, so you could also envision combination therapy. When do you think these uh, compounds will be tested in humans? Yeah. It's a very active area of, of um, research at the moment, and several pharmaceutical companies are working on new long-acting and, and, and highly potent um, sodium channel blockers. Um, there are phase one studies in healthy volunteers already ongoing, um, and I expect um, that there will be the first early phase clinical trials in CF patients within the next few years. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Mall, and thank you for joining me in this special edition of eCystic Fibrosis Review.